grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. All those able, please rise for the opening sentences. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You discern my thoughts from far away. Let us pray. God of eternal love, you are slow to anger and full of mercy. We live and move and have our being in you, and you have made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. Give us purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will, no weakness keep us from doing it, that in your light we may see light clearly, and in your service find perfect freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> ourselves and the truth is not in us. However, if we confess our sin, God who is faithful hears our prayers, forgives us all of our sin, and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So therefore, in humility and in faith as one family in God, let us pray together our prayer of confession and follow with a time of silent confession. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our fortress, forgive us when we fail to trust in you. Forgive us when we are seduced into believing that we are the masters of our lives. Forgive us when we misplace our allegiance, putting our ultimate trust in things, institutions, or other people. Forgive us when we choose our ease and comfort over your demanding claims upon us. Forgive us, we pray.
Beloved, the Lord says, I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Know that you and I are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Jesus Christ, we also must forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. It is a beautiful thing to witness the passing of peace with the people of God. I hope it is your prayer on a regular basis that this peace of God will transcend our world. A special welcome this morning to any visitors among us. We hope and pray that our service is meaningful to your faith. If you have not yet signed the pew register, I invite you to do so at this point. I call your attention to the yellow insert, which has lots of great news that's going on in our church and in our community. Please take time to read through this. And also please note the insert relative to the Easter lilies. At this time, I'd like to ask Mr. Norm Nelson to come forward from the Congregational Nominating Committee for a minute for mission. Good morning. In the back of the bulletin, you'll notice a uh, message from the session about the transition team and the pastor nominate the interim pastor nominating committee and also the congregational nominating committee and how that how all that goes together you probably know i'm a retired pilot and so i'm going to try to give you a very succinct and quick quick look from 5,000 feet to what's happening right now in our church and first of all i have to say when you stand here and look above and listen to the choir and hear our, our organ director play that organ. Isn't it magnificent? I agree. So we have a wonderful church. We have a really good session. We have many, many great leaders in our church. And I want to assure you that those of us in leadership positions care about each and every one of you, and we care about our church. We have an interim pastor nominating committee, which was formed last week after the service when we met with Steve Benz, who's from the Presbytery, and Paul Carter is our leader in that committee, Susan Goddard, Neil Smith, and myself are all members. And what we will do is we will look through all the different interim pastor people who are interested in coming to our church, and then we will recommend something to our session. It's not just going to be the four of us who will make the determination, but it will be the session as a whole. I am also the chairman of the Congregational Nominating Committee. And I hope I don't confuse you with all this stuff, but just try to give you a quick overview. And a Congregational Nominating Committee selects elders and deacons and trustees, but when there's a departure of a pastor in which Dudley and Mary have departed, we also help with the process of finding a new minister. The session will tell the Congregational Nominating Committee how many people they believe should be on the pastor nominating committee search committee and once the congregational nominating committee finds out then we will visit together and we will choose the people who will be on the pastor nominating committee and after may 1st there will be brochures in the bulletins and you'll be able to put yourself or other people that you think might be good to be on those committees I would like to thank you for your participation in our church. We have a strong church. We have a great transition team. We have great ministers and Dr. Camp and Amy. So thank you very much for loving this church. Trust in God and pray. Thank you. Thank you, Norm, and thank you for the work of your committee. 
As we approach God's word, let us do so with humility and in prayer. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, move in our hearts and minds, opening the scriptures to us, that as they are read and proclaimed, we might be led deeper into faith and into trust for the sake of Christ, our brother and the redeemer of the world. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 16 through 21. And this is the text from which today's sermon is taken. Hear now the prophet. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson today is taken from the third chapter of Philippians, the letter from Paul. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews. As to the law, a Pharisee. As to zeal, a persecutor of the church. As to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Thanks be to God. I should say, I'm sorry, the word of the Lord. Will all the children please join me for the children's moment? One, 
Right over here in the middle. Right over there. Thank you. Let's all think about the last time we smelled perfume. Maybe it was when our mother hugged us. Maybe it was when our aunt visited us. Well, today's Bible story is about Mary, who took some expensive perfume from a jar and wiped the feet of Jesus with her long <coughs> hair. And the house they were in was filled with the smell of perfume. Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' disciples, was in the room <coughs> and said, the perfume was worth a small fortune and should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She did it in preparation for my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but I will not be here with you much longer. Let's bow our heads in prayer. As we get closer to Palm Sunday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, help us to remember what Jesus did for us and what Jesus means to us. Amen. Don't forget your worship bags. you're able for today's gospel lesson. From Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the holy temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands he will bear you up, so that you will not dash your head upon the stone." Jesus said to him, again it is written, do not ever put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their great splendor and said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away with you Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Well, here we are, the second Sunday since Dudley's retirement, and I wonder what you're feeling. I wonder what you're thinking at this particular moment. Well, I'll tell you what I'm thinking at this particular moment. What I'm thinking is, is that I love the Old Testament lesson for this morning. Just over 15 years ago, Amy and I chose this very text as the Old Testament reading at our wedding. The promise of new life in the Bible finds a vivid expression in today's passage from Isaiah. 
Our reading from Isaiah is a perfect text for a wedding and for a church embarking upon a new life together. The passage reminds us that the Lord can make a way when the way forward seems frightening or uncertain. With some amount of rhetorical brilliance, the author of Isaiah reminds us to look forward to the innovation that God will bring. I am about to do a new thing, declares the Lord. Do you not perceive it? Of course, our Old Testament reading from Isaiah has nothing whatsoever to do with a wedding. The text was written just before the fall of Babylon, the empire that initially conquered, captured, and exiled the Jews in 586 BC. Be this as it may, and despite the fact that this old, old text was not written with the church in mind, Christians have always found comfort and hope in its words. I remember the day when Amy and I were standing before our pastor, the day of our wedding. These words from Isaiah reassured me that God is in the business of creating newness and possibility. As my knees were quaking and my heart was bouncing out of my chest, I was reminded that God can make a way forward when the way forward seems inexact and daunting. God can make a way forward because God, our God, is the progenitor of newness. Last Sunday, our transitional presbyter, Mr. Steve Benz, did his best to assure you of our church's strong future. And I want to do the same this morning. The session of Memorial Presbyterian Church is exceptionally strong, and we are unified. The Presbytery is here for us as a resource, and in due time, an interim pastor will help lead us. Finally, as pastors in this church, Amy and I are deeply, deeply committed to you. We are going nowhere unless God grabs us by the scuff of our neck and hauls us out of here. We are here for you. We love you. But it is God who will make a way. It is God who helped the exiles in Babylon, and it is God who is in the process of doing a new thing in our beloved church. The very famous and now deceased Roman Catholic pastor and theologian, Henry Nouwen, penned these words. I can be happy or unhappy in all situations. I am sure of it because I have been. I have felt distraught and joyful in situations of abundance and in poverty, in situations of success and failure. The difference, says Nowen, is never based on the situation itself, but always on my state of mind and my state of heart. When I knew I was walking with God, I always felt happy and at peace. When I was entangled in my own complaints and emotional needs, I always felt restless and divided. As the process 
of working with an interim pastor unfolds, issues may surface that produce in you fear or anxiety. Amy and I are here for you. Should a loved one die, you may think to yourself, no one knew this person as well as Dudley. Amy and I are here for you. Or if you happen to find yourself in need of a trusted confidant, you may be anxious that no one has the history with you that Dudley did. Again, Amy and I are here for you. With near certainty, I can say that things will be different. The preaching style or hymn selection won't just be like Dudley did it. And I doubt you will ever hear another pastor sing like Dudley. You certainly won't hear me sing that way. I can dance, but I cannot sing. But with transition comes possibility. And possibility breeds hope. And just as God walked with the Israelites, so God walks with you and me. During the coming months, it will be very crucial for us to trust the Lord, to be extra gracious with one another. During the next many months, there may be times when you wonder if we have been left wandering in the wilderness. But remember, remember that God did not abandon the exiles in Babylon, and God will not abandon our church. I am convinced that God has great things in store for us, and our job, your job, is to be faithful in prayer, faithful in service, and faithful in worship. For people of faith, we have every reason to live this life unafraid and undaunted by our circumstances. Not that we won't have times of anxiety. We will. We are human. But God, the God that we know in Jesus Christ, will give us the strength and the courage to persevere. We have God. God has us. And we have each other. All shall be well. All shall be well. To God be the glory this day and for all eternity. Amen.
continue to respond to God's word to us on this Lord's Day by saying what we believe using words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Join our hearts for our prayers for the people of God. Let us pray. Great God of the wilderness and God of the empty tomb, we live and we move and we have our being in you. You are our north, our south, our east, and our west. There is nowhere we can run, nowhere we can hide that your Holy Spirit, your divine love, is not with us. For you never let us go. And whatever it is that keeps us from living out of the power of your love in our lives, we ask for liberation and freedom from these things. Help us, Lord, to not look back, but to pay attention now to the new things you are doing in our midst. Give us thirsty eyes. Give us hungry ears to see and hear you in new ways. We pray for our world today, remembering that it is your world, and you have the whole world in your caring, loving hands. We remember the sick and those recovering from surgeries. We remember with all who struggle with addiction, and mental illness and their families. We remember all who carry heavy burdens and your invitation to come to you with those burdens. We remember those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially the Carpenter family and the Lovell family. We pray for our church in this time of transition. We pray for our church staff, for our session, for our interim search committee, for our congregational nominating committee. We remember our troops serving so faithfully all over the world and at home and their families. We remember our police officers, our firefighters, and all emergency personnel. We remember to you this week all those who are seeking public office and those who serve in public offices. We pray for your will, O oh Lord. Thy will, not ours, be done. Hear now our silent prayers we have for ourselves, our families, our church, our country, and our world. Hear our prayers. Finally, we ask, loving Lord, that you would use us in a mighty way as the church of Jesus Christ, as your body here on earth. The new things that you are seeking to do in our community, in our church, in our world, in our nation. Use us, your daughters and sons, to bring you glory. In Jesus' name. received so many gifts from a generous and a faithful and a loving God. So freely and with joy, let us give with our morning offerings, remembering the Reformed tradition of gratitude and giving all to our God. Will the ushers please come forward?
together we pray, God of compassion, we pray that you look upon our frail lives with love and understanding, and that you desire for us all a new life in Jesus Christ. We are overwhelmed by your love, which goes to the cross for us, endures the grave, and leads us to new life. By your spirit, strengthen our souls to be brave and bold in Christ's service. Take our offerings and use them and us for your purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught all of his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Sisters and brothers, I charge you this day to go into the world and to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your strength, and all of your soul, and to love your neighbor as your very own self. And may the mercy, peace, and grace of our holy triune God rest upon you this day and throughout all eternity. Amen.